My name is Inger Lise Mathisen, and I'm the marketing coordinator in the title company, Hamfest Rum. So we're sitting beside the world's first... No, you tell me, because it's quite particular, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's the world's first tidal turbine uh, converting the kinetic energy in tidal waters to electrical energy. Now, everyone listening is going, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> what what's the it? distinction there, the kinetic versus, what's that? Uh, you have two, ty- two, two types of energy from tidal water. You have this uh, height uh, difference. You That's can, the height. Yeah, height difference. So when the tide goes up and down, you could get energy that way. Or, yeah. or uh, from the movements in the water. Uh, that's the kinetic energy. So it's kind of backwards and forwards? Yes. So this is backwards and forwards? Yes, it is. So it's the world's first backwards and forwards turbine, yeah. which is supplying energy to the grid here in Norway. People will be able to see pictures as this is being heard of this stunning place, but it's a, a very it's a very kind of narrow uh, bit between two... Is it an island and... yeah. Yes, between an island and the mainland, yeah. So the water is moving uh, backwards and forwards between uh, these islands. Uh, so that's the energy we are getting out. Now Hammerfest, which is uh, where the, the turbine company is based, um, Hammerfest is an energy town and it has been since, what, 1890? 1891. Uh, in 1891, we became the first uh, town in Northern Europe to get electricity uh, from hydro uh, power. Uh, this was on a river? Yeah, from a river. Uh, we then uh, had... Well, no, hang, hang on, you see, people are kind of going, well, yeah, fine. Hammerfest, how far north is this? Because it takes, it takes me getting my head around how far north I've come here from Oslo. How, yeah. What's it on the same latitude as? Uh, yeah, you are in the world's most northern town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're we're further north than well, just everything else—the mainland of Canada, Alaska. In the world's most northern town. So you guys are sitting here, away off on your own, you know, in what people would absolutely think are the frozen wastes, <laughs> and you came up with the world's first, or rather, the, the first uh, electric streetlights in northern Europe. Not Oslo, not not you know, not Denmark, not Scotland. It was here. Yes, it was. Okay, so you're smart guys, but wh- <laughs> why why were you first? In the winter, it's all dark in Hammerfest and in North Norway, and then you start to look around. How can we get it lighter? And that's how they came up with the idea to go to France to the uh, to the. Um, uh, conference where they were pre- presenting the, this type of technology. So that's how we got uh, the, uh, the energy in 1980, nine, 1891. Yeah. And how, how many street lights did you get out of the first turbine? Uh, after a little while, every household get one light. That was uh, amazing at that point. Yeah, It is amazing. And it's the same company that's now gone on a century later, to develop this tidal turbine and be, be a pioneer all over again? Yes, uh, the idea came from Hamfest Energy. And Hamfest Energy, uh, in 1997, established Hamfest Strum, uh, which uh, has developed the, the tidal technology. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, one of the questions might be answered by the background noise, which was a, a gull, a seagull, being quite quite happily out there on the water. Is there any difficulty for the environment or for animals with this turbine? Hamfestrum has a huge uh, focus on the environment and the technology is designed uh, to harm, to not harm the environment. By using the tripod structure, which is not drilled to the sea bottom, it is mounted by help from the gravity and uh, by using weights we are creating minimal fit footprint on the seabed. And if this works then, this is the technology that will be hopefully exported to manufacture more turbines, bigger ones in Scotland, and will then provide power for, well, Isla, for example, 
in what 20 when 2011 our intention is to install a one megawatt device in Scottish water in 10 2010 and uh, this will be a one megawatt full-scale demonstration model uh, the next step is to take the technology into a commercial park and the intention is to deliver the first commercial park to Scottish Power Renewables in 2011. What's the potential for this? You know, that's one small step for Hammerfest Strom. When will it be a giant leap for mankind? When the technology is commercialised, we have a global potential of 150 terawatt hours per year. The audience is shouting, what again? What does that mean? (laughs) I mean, terawatts, what does that mean in terms of houses that you could heat or, you know, what does it mean? I can give you an example of 60 turbines which Scottish Power has announced in in September 2008. Uh, 60 turbines will supply uh, about 40,000 households and that's one, 60 megawatts. So 150 terawatts hour, that's a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so this, this environment here, will Hammerfest retain you know be at the center of all of this because you've also got uh other sorts of energy here you've now got the snow uh, snow white liquid liquefied gas yeah lng yeah uh Humfest is known as uh, an energy city due to the long energy history uh, and snow white is uh, one of uh, many uh, energy suppliers but this one's pretty amazing as well. I mean, it's probably a pioneer in its own way too because it's taking, it's taking in an entirely subsea operation, it's taking liquefied gas from underneath the sea mm. and into the, into the uh, is it processed here or just stored and then it goes on to tankers? It is processed here. The, the knowledge and the, <laughs> we have worked with uh, subsea stru- structures for many years and the knowledge for, from this uh, has been taken further and put into new technology like tidal power. You're telling me this has not been a very usual winter because there hasn't been enough snow yeah. uh, for you to get out in the old snowmobiles and you won't be skiing at Easter. <laughs> no. 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 Uh, the environment has changed over the years. Uh, in 1997 we had a lot more snow than we had today. Tell me about that again. Yeah, this was when people could actually were getting out of their windows. Yes, they had to um, uh, take away the snow uh, and go in and out from their windows to actually get into their houses. And you're telling me they were fixing the street lights by just sort of leaning out of their houses because there was so, yeah. so much snow. The guys who are fixing the street lights, when they were going to change the, the light, uh, they were just standing on the snow, uh, leaning a little bit down and... <laughs> Changing the light. And yeah. you also tell me, because you, you yourself come from even further north, just right up at Kirkenes, yeah. near there, minus 27, that's and you're going, pfft, no, it's not much. much no, different. that's not much, that's not much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and one year, uh, I can tell you from an experience, we could go out and throw a cup of hot water in the air, and it became ice. That was the extreme <laughs> example but that, that's only happened one time, yeah. That is some trick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is, is it actually colder around here if the wind's blowing? Yeah, it's colder. Where I come from, 27 minus, can compare it to 15 minus in Hamfest and wind. Uh, the wind is quite cold, so it's an Arctic uh, environment. And yeah. it's, it's all going to be happening here in the future, isn't it? You know, with gas, oil discoveries, yourselves... Everybody who thinks it's strange to want to live so far north may be surprised yet. Yeah, but we have the technology, internet, and we are communicating with the rest of the world. So if we can produce uh, new and environmental friendly from this far north, we can produce it for the rest of the world as well. But like, do your friends think you're crazy for living up so far north? (laughs) Yeah, they do, they do, they do. Uh, my study uh, buddies uh, was telling me that you are moving all up to the north Norway. What are you going to do there? You're an international marketer. And I was saying, well, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so you will probably have the last laugh. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> let's see. <laughs>